Hello and welcome everyone. The topic that I am taking today is the important uh, comparison between the lymphoblast and the myeloblast. And you know these are the precursor cell for the mature WBCs. The lymphoblast they give uh, rise to the lymphocytes and the myeloblast they uh, mature and they give rise to the granulocytes. Generally these immature cells, these immature WBC precursors, they proliferate uncontrollably in case of acute leukemia. So in the lymphoblast, they are increased in number, they proliferate in the bone marrow in case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, while these myeloblast, they uh, proliferate in the bone marrow in case of acute myeloid leukemia. And uh, the very importantly, this uh, question comes in the exam and uh, you should know the differences between these two cells, myeloblast and lymphoblast. So let's start. The lymphoblast they are smaller, slightly smaller in size than the myeloblast and myeloblast they have a larger size up to 20 microns while these are smaller up to 15 to 18 microns. Then uh, the lymphoblast they have scanty basophilic cytoplasm, their cytoplasm is very less, it is very difficult to identify the uh, cytoplasm of lymphocyte and that cytoplasm it generally it lacks any granules, so it, uh, there is, it is agranular. This is an important difference while uh, in the myeloblast the cytoplasm is scanty although more than the lymphoblast and but generally the granules are seen when the myeloblast is differentiated then uh, it, uh, its cytoplasm will show granules and often needle like or rods they are seen and these or rods they are formed by the combination of many azerophilic granules so they form uh, like a needle like structure which is known as or rods with a very very important differentiating point uh, between lymphoblast and myeloblast. Also here I would like to tell you that if the myeloblast is <coughs> not differentiated or if they are minimally differentiated then also then we are not able to detect the granules and or rods in the morphology and often immunophenotyping is needed to detect uh, that it is a myeloblast. Then uh, the next point is uh, when we see uh, the nucleus the chromatin of the lymphoblast it is clumped means this it is clumped at different places it is not uniform so there is clumping of chromatin it is also known as the coarse clumped chromatin which is seen in case of uh, lymphoblast while the chromatin in case of myeloblast it is fine so fine means that it is uniformly distributed the chromatin is uniformly distributed and there is no clumping this is uh, another important differentiating point now uh, the, although the lymphoblasts they don't have any vacuoles but uh, in the L3 category that is the FAP classification of lymphoblast L3 granule, uh, vacuoles can be seen. So vacuoles are a feature of L3 ALL while it is not seen in case of myeloblast. Next important differentiating point is nucleoli. Uh, in lymphoblast generally the nucleoli they are inconspicuous. They are not seen, they are indistinct and uh, they are uh, less in number that is 1 to 2 while uh, in the myeloblast they are characterized by prominent nuclei generally 3 to 5 nuclei can be seen and they are very prominent prominent and they have a punched out ap uh, appearance it looks like they have been uh, removed the chromatin at this place it is removed by the using a punch so it is called a punched out appearance of the nuclei so this is another important uh, differentiating point Next, after uh, this, these points were those of the morphology. Now, the next uh, differentiating points, these are for the cytochemical stains. So, uh, when we talk about the cytochemical stains, uh, the lymphoblast, they are, uh, they stain importantly for a stain that is PAS, periodic acid shift stain. So, periodic acid shift stain in case of lymphoblast, it shows a block positivity in the cytoplasm. This is very very important to know. Like this the pass positive material will be seen in the uh, cytoplasm of the lymphoblast. While in case of myeloblast it is generally pass negative except for a category that, that is AML M6 which is uh, acute erythroid leukemia in which the cytoplasm shows positivity but that positivity is diffuse. So this is the difference that in the lymphoblast we see block or dot like positivity in the cytoplasm while 
and the myeloblast pass is negative except for uh, AML, AML M6 where the erythroblast they will show the diffuse positivity in their cytoplasm. Next important differentiating point is that the characteristic stains for the uh, well differentiated uh, myeloblast they are myeloproxidase and Sudan black B. So these two stains these are negative for lymphoblast. This is another very important differentiating point. Then the last uh, points of differentiation are the immune markers. So sometimes uh, the morphology and even the cytochemical stains they are not able to help us to differentiate between these two lymphoblast and myeloblast. In that case the immune markers they play an important role. So immune markers these are the antigenic markers which are uh, present on the cell on these cell and uh, these uh, the antibodies against these antigens they are available commercially in the market and we can use these markers. So we can use them at uh, two places one is in the bone marrow biopsy we can use uh, in the form of immunohistochemistry and secondly in the flow cytometry. Flow cytometry which, which is generally the investigation of choice for diagnosing leukemias. So uh, what markers are specific for the lymphoblast? DDT, uh, it marks the pre-B and pre-T cells. Then there are uh, markers uh, positive for the B cells like uh, CD10, CD19. Then T cell markers are CD1, 2, 3, 5, 7. All these are the markers which we can use to identify the lymphoblast. And for the myeloblast, the immune markers that we can use are uh, anti-MPO, then CD markers like CD13, 33 and 117. And another important uh, markers that can come in MCQs can be asked in VIVA. Uh, like in the FAB classification of AML in the M4, M5 category, which is myelomonocytic and monocytic, the immune markers that can be used to for the uh, monocytic cells are CD11, CD14. Next, in acute erythroid leukemia, for the erythroblast, uh, we can use glycophorin A and CD71 is the markers. And for M7 category, that is acute megakaryoblastic leukemia, the, the two markers that are used are CD41, CD61. These things are very, very important for the MCQs. So for the MBBS level, uh, you should uh, uh, know the morphology, the morphological differences between the lymphoblast, myeloblast. Secondly, cytochemical stains, they ask you should know the names the PAS, MPO, SBB and what are the differences then just the names of the immune markers for these both and even if you don't remember the immune markers you should remember the morphology and cytochemistry at the level of uh, for the undergraduates but you should always uh, try to remember these because they come in MCQs. So in the next video I will tell you how to uh, draw this diagram which is very easy to draw for myeloblast and lymphoblast. So whenever question comes, you have to supplement the, your answer with the uh, diagram for the same. So thank you very much. Any questions are uh, most welcome in the comment section and your feedback is also most welcome. Thank you so much.